Hey everybody, this is Brian Yell. On Origin Stories on Creativity number 36, I had Chris Heron return. Unfortunately, the first time I had him on, we had some technical difficulties where I had um, some audio issues. He let me know. I ignored him and I had an unusable podcast talked for an hour. That's uh, two podcasts that I did in entirety that I was unable to use. I still have yet to reschedule the first one, but Chris was uh, kind enough to uh, get another one in the can with me, which was really fantastic. Um, Minus one embarrassing story. This is a uh, great experience where we talk about um, why he is... uh, he put this project together called uh, Tall Tales. He has a YouTube channel and a website where he does the audio versions of short fantasy and science fiction stories. Um, when I first heard about it, I thought it was a magnificent idea. As an indie author, as a short fiction storyteller, I jumped at the opportunity to have him tell one of my stories. And not only that, but uh, he is an amazing conversationalist, and I really enjoy talking with him, not only this time, but the first time as well, and I hope to have him back on the podcast. Um, Contact information, of course, is going to be in the notes. Uh, If you're a writer, get your fiction into him. Uh, I hope he blows up. I hope it it works out. In fact, it already seems to be doing that, and he's got an article in with io9, uh, where they've done a little interview with him, and you know, he's got no shortage of work to read, and I hope that continues going into the future. Otherwise, uh, here's Chris Heron talking about his uh, project. He, at one time, was going to be episode number 32. Today, he is episode number 36 because he was kind enough to tell me I sounded like a robot. I made a joke. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, I sounded like a robot. And unfortunately, I was not able to use that entire conversation. He said absolutely the most genius stuff, and it'll never be heard by the world. Chris, thank you so much for letting me know I sounded like a robot, and I apologize that I was not able to use that genius conversation. Hopefully, hopefully you're able to duplicate everything you said. It was just a dry run for this time. We're good. (laughs) Perfect. How are you doing tonight? I am great. I'm still awake, and that's, you know, news for me. (laughs) (laughs) Are you, uh, do you work early tomorrow morning? Oh, yeah. We wake up at about 3 a.m. So, oh, oh, that's tough. Yeah. I'm doing, I do the 2 a.m. thing too. That's, uh, that's tough. Did you get a lot done today as far as recording? Oh, yeah. I spent the entire day working on this piece. I just finished right before I hopped on with you. Barely. What, um, (laughs) What piece were you working on? What kind of, what I'm kind of story? The, it, it's the uh, the ongoing series by my wife. It's the uh, of monsters and mushrooms uh, series. Oh, okay. Uh, it, Tall Tale TV. Uh, just to get into that a little bit, so people know what exactly you're you're working on. It's a, a really really neat project um, that you've decided to take on yourself, where you're reading aloud uh, fantasy and science fiction stories. How many yeah, authors have uh, you worked with so far? Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> uh, if I had to ballpark, I'd say 20, well, I probably recorded about 20 different authors, uh, but I've got uh, another 10, 15 down the line that I've already got scheduled. Something along those lines. I don't have an exact number in front of me though. It's caught on. I mean, there's, there's been some attention directed towards you. Yeah. And yeah, the word is spreading. <laughs> you're pretty talented in terms of voicing these stories i mean when i first heard your you know when i first heard about you it was on reddit you came out and did a little bit of an advertisement and you uh you know you uh you said what you were doing and i was really intrigued because you had it was kind it sounded altruistic you had uh decided that you were going to put away your pen so to speak right right and and not right anymore Go ahead. I, I actually did approach it from an altruistic, uh, you know, angle. So yeah, that's I never really thought of putting it that way, but I did. I wanted to make it so nobody had to pay me to do what I was going to do for them. With with a traditional audiobook, you know, there's uh, a transaction of money there. 
Which so is neat because there free. was a woman who got me into podcasting. She didn't know she got me into podcasting. You know, I'd always been fantasizing about putting on the earphones and the, the microphone and kind of talking to people, you know, Joe Rogan style. I'd always like <laughs> fantasized about doing this. I'd done a few myself, you know, sat here and just kind of rambled off for 45 minutes and they were horrible. But Emma Hardcastle, she, you know, tweeted one day and I'm staring at my computer and all of a sudden this tweet came through. Would anybody like to be on my podcast? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like waiting for there to be money associated with it. Well, pay me 20 bucks or something. And she's like, no, it's free. So I did her cool. podcast. I'm like, how'd you do this thing? Or how are you putting this together? She goes, well, I just want to talk to people about writing. It's like, then I saw your your message on Reddit. It's like, oh, it's free. I just want to read people's stories and get you know their stuff out there. Yep. It's like such a neat idea, doing things for other people, being an artist with other artists. I mean, it's just a really fantastic. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what, what would you call it? I mean, is it community forming? Uh, it, it kind of has been. I, I just approached it as, you know, well, it's going to be what it's going to be. But yeah, definitely. I've been having a, a lot of people that have stuck around. You know, some people that are always commenting on the stuff that I'm putting out and just kind of hanging out, you know, not really asking for anything. So yeah, I guess it's kind of building a, a pretty small community so far, but a community. So I mean, it's in terms been a of, heck of a lot of fun. Yeah, in terms of you with me, um, when I see your name, it makes me feel good. <laughs> Ever since <laughs> I and, and you read one of my stories, you know, I mean the title's ridiculously long and I wish I had changed it, but I kind of have an affinity to it now. Being oh, I love the title. Read it, you love the title. <laughs> I love that title. That's one of my favorite titles, man. Don't change it. <laughs> one gnome, two gnome, three gnome gone. I laughed the first time I saw that email. <laughs> <laughs> well, ever since you read that story, now every time I see your name float through on Twitter, I was like, "Oh, that's my boy. I love it." I was like, <laughs> "I will upvote. I will, you know, like. I will retweet everything you say. That's just fantastic." And that's, I think, that's what you've basically been getting from everybody that you've you know, read a story for, I would imagine anyway. Yeah, for the most part, definitely. And I've, I've, you know, worked with a couple guys where they, they just keep sending me stuff. It's like, I love the last one. Can you do this one too? You know, so <laughs> absolutely. I just love doing this. What, what but, happens you know, though, when you read a story and then you get the next one and the quality is not as there as you'd like it to be, does that happen? Or is that even a fair question to ask you? No, it, it's a fair question. And I mean, I think I'm actually working with, you know, a couple of authors who are traditionally published and then some people who don't even have a book done. So obviously there's going to be a wide range of, you know, talent skills, you know, and uh, I've, I've always been the, the guy who people come to for the critiquing. Uh -huh. And so I really approach stories as, you know, is this good or is it bad? I approach it as this is what it is. And Traditionally, I would, you know, look at it and say, this is how you could improve it, but I've never looked at something to see this is bad. This is, you know, good, you know, whatever. I, I look at the individual aspects of it to try to give, you know, encouragement and stuff like that. So I've never really been in that mindset of how good does it have to be to be on the channel? I want to help, you know, anybody who wants to be part of the channel. Yeah. Uh, eventually, I'm going to have to start, you know, cracking down on, okay, this one's a little bit too long. This one has too many voices, stuff like that, because I'm not going to be able to keep up with the uh, the flow of stories coming in. So I'm going to have to find ways to kind of pull that down. But I don't want to be the guy who judges it based solely on the uh, the talent behind it. It's very interesting. I think last time we talked, we, we got into uh, outsourcing. And I think we discussed, mm -hmm. you know, the, the voice outsourcing bringing on other actors so i think you consider yourself a voice actor and you right. discussed not wanting to really outsource your voice because people are trusting you to be the voice of their story have you considered potentially outsourcing the critique like hey let's call him john smith because you know that's the you know, that's the name people give to you know the, the, the vanilla version of people john smith your yep. story is not there why don't you head on over to reddit fantasy writers and and get some critique on this story and maybe make it a little bit stronger. I mean, are, have you considered maybe helping them become stronger writers or are you going to take on both the hat of the actor and the critiquer for all of these people that might be coming your way in the future? That's an interesting question to, to be completely honest. I hadn't gotten that far yet. That um, might be happening for you. I mean, unfortunately, the more, more press you get, I mean, io9 has your uh, you've gotten the attention of io9 
yeah, <laughs> who knows what's going to happen later on down the road for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as outsourcing stuff, um, I, I've always considered, you know, doing stuff like that down the road, especially the, uh, the, what gets in, what doesn't, but you, you kind of have to have either an individual who approaches you saying, I want to do this, or you have to have enough of a community to ask around. I, I don't know how to approach that yet. And it's kind of a bridge I'll, I guess I'll cross when I get there, but you actually made me kind of think about it. So that's probably a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So it's, I you. mean, there aren't many, I mean, I don't know. I, right now you're sitting at 15 stories deep and they're all making it. I mean, you, you're not cutting any of those and you haven't really gotten to the point where you've decided that you're not going to cut anybody. Right. Um, I actually have uh, rejected a handful of things usually, or actually always it's because it doesn't quite meet the criteria that I put on there. Uh -huh. uh, like I had one guy ask, you know, can you do this entire novel? Oh. <laughs> I, 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 it's like, I would love to, I actually read, you know, the, the first couple of chapters. I don't actually have time to read much anymore, unfortunately, mm. but I read the first couple of chapters. It's an amazing book. I offered to, you know, do a chapter excerpt and I haven't heard back from them. That's happened a, a couple of times, something like that. Um, sometimes they'll send me something that is not sci-fi or fantasy. Um, I had one that was, uh, blatantly, um, erotica. Uh, offensive. No, not erotica. Oh, I'm actually... Okay. Haven't gotten any of that yet. <laughs> I'm waiting for that day. <laughs> but uh, yeah, one was offensive, so I had to say, you know, I love the story, but I, I can't take this one. You know, it's just little things like that where it doesn't quite fit into that criteria that I have. That's very interesting. Uh, in terms of the excerpt that makes me think maybe potentially down the road, there might be some voice work for you where you're being paid to maybe read a novel. Would that uh, turn yeah. your head towards maybe dropping Tall Tale TV a little bit for a month or so for some paid gigs? Uh, not Is... unless it was somebody like Rothfuss or something like that, which I don't <laughs> oh, foresee man. ever actually happening. But um, I, I book number three, I, you're I, the like... reader. <laughs> right, <laughs> Doors of Stone. <laughs> oh God, I'm waiting for that book. Oh but, man, um... me too. I hate him so much. I discovered that, that <laughs> series in February. I read those in Hawaii. It's like one book down, two books down. Oh, the third one's not ready yet. I what do you mean? So it was much. seven years since the last one. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm like following that whole horrible ordeal. He's like, it's just not working out very well. Yeah. What's wrong with you, man? What's wrong with you? What is happening with that? What do you think is happening with that? I, I, I don't know. Um. I'm guessing he's uh, just a perfectionist would be my guess. And it's, he agonizes over it. Cause I know that's what he did with his first novel. It took him seven years to write his first novel or something like that. And I love the guy to death. He's my second favorite author of all time, but I mean, I, I can't wait any longer. You know, it's, it's killing me. The first novel was good. The second novel did suffer yeah. from a little bit of quality issues. I think right in the middle. Did it? I don't think it had as much oomph as the first one did. I only read that one twice. The other one I read four times, so I'll have to read it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, man, but that, it was good, though. It just sucked you straight through that character for some reason. Yep, it just, I love it. It was really well done. What I was want more of that kind of stuff. Oh, uh, right. the original I remember where we were. Was... <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I actually kind of had a, a choice to make when I started because, you know, after my whole ordeal, whole ordeal um, I wanted to do audiobooks. And I kind of looked into it and I found ACX, which is kind of a venue where uh, voice talents can meet with authors and they, you know, put something together. And I kind of realized that all these projects were going to be extremely large scale. Mm -hmm. And I just love volume as far as stories go. I've always loved short stories more than novels, uh, as weird as that sounds. But That's interesting. I could either do, you know, a couple hundred books in my life or I could do a couple thousand short stories. So I decided to go for the short stories because I'd rather experience all those different worlds, all those different ideas. So I don't think I'll be going to books unless something pretty major comes my way. So Where did you discover short fiction at? I mean, they really, that is an odd uh, kind of medium to kind of discover in this world. I mean, they're not very popular. A lot of people don't even know they exist as a form of entertainment. Well, um, kind of an interesting story. Uh, the, the guy I told you about last time we are talking about that I, um, he was my high school best friend, still is actually. Uh, his name is J.D. Wiley is what he goes by. And he's been trying to become an author for quite a while now. And we just keep changing projects that we're working on. And I've you know, always worked with this guy. We kind of 
you know, uh, collaborate on a lot of stuff. And we started working on something that was called Bitter Bullet. And this was probably, oh, like seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And at first it was going to be a YouTube show or whatever, but then we decided it was just going to be kind of a, a serial, you know, a, a written serial. And so we started coming up with these little short stories where it was the antics of these two guys walking through the wasteland and stuff like that. And I've been stuck on short fiction ever since then because I love the serialized nature that you can get with it, where it's kind of like a little TV episode. Interesting. So, uh, Twilight yeah. Zone, more, or do you want the continuization, more chapterish? A uh, little bit of both. You know, I love kind of the the Twilight where every single one is a different story, but then also um, kind of more like a. You could go with something like Supernatural, where, you know, in the beginning, it was all every single episode was a different adventure, but there's an overarching plot to the entire season. Okay. You know, something like that. That is but, very yeah, interesting. That, kind of like that is very popular fiction. nowadays, too, where there's two characters kind of working their way through, like Eureka or, or what is it, Warehouse 13 or something, where there is a definite yep. setting that the Both audience is getting used to and yep. everything kind of centers around that or ends there or begins there or something happens within it. People like that stuff. I guess that's been the nature of entertainment for the last like 50 years or 60 years or something along those lines. Yeah. I mean, if you look way back, I mean, that was kind of the way that stuff was going around the time of, uh, you know, Sherlock Holmes and everything. It was all short fiction serials. That's very true. And then Charles Dickens was writing serials, but I guess his was more in the novelization of those situations. I mean, great expectations and all that. The the longer form serialization that turns into, you know, yeah, the novel. All of it's great. Yeah. Um, I intend to write the short fiction that ends. It doesn't continue. My <laughs> wife says I kill everybody that I write. My characters are horribly dis disfigured by the end of my stuff. <laughs> That's the way to do it. <laughs> you got to um, care about the, whether the character is going to live or die, right? Yeah. Do you think this is pretty unique, though? Are there other people doing what you're doing, or do you do you find that you're pretty out there on your own? Um. Yes and no. Uh. So when I started this, I actually uh, got into this uh, project, and then I found uh, somebody who was kind of doing something similar, and that is the horror community basically with the creepypasta phenomenon. I don't know if you've ever oh, seen Oh, yeah. I discovered some of that stuff, too. Dan, it's not as yeah. good as you, though. Well, I, I, there's some no, pretty I'm, you're awesome. You've got some quality oh, stuff. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, just, I remember one specifically. It was about Disney World or something, and he was going over blah, 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 and it was just thinking of that one specifically <laughs> compared to what you're doing. There was no comparison. But that was, I only saw one. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, but yeah, there's actually a ton of creepypasta narrators. It's a whole community based around this thing. But then you move out of horror, and there's pretty much nobody else that I found. You know, there might be, I just haven't found them, that are doing modern fiction. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a couple people who are doing all the stuff that's in the, uh, the public domain. And there's like one or two guys who will occasionally do their own stuff. But as far as, you know, just all these different authors that are trying to get out right now, I haven't come across anybody and I really wish there was. I'm really hoping to inspire somebody to, to join me because it's kind of lonely. So so uh, as far as the creepypasta, uh, is it popular? Oh, it is so popular. It is in, it, it's pretty insane. So I'm and, actually I mean, a fan you're under the same umbrella, speculative fiction, but they're going in a different bent though, are they? They're not, they don't call themselves fiction or do they? Honestly, they want to go in the more know. realism type arena. For the, I mean, everybody kind of has their own take. It's like some of them like to do true stories or, or purported true stories. Uh, some of them only like to do kind of the uh, Lovecraftian kind of tales. You know, others are more the goosebump styles where it's kind of kiddish kind of stories, you know, um, younger adult stuff. Uh, and then others are just straight up slasher fic kind of things. You know, everybody kind of approaches it with what they prefer. So, it's kind of hard to nail down. There's so many, and I've just kind of scratched the surface. I know a couple of them pretty well, uh -huh. but beyond that, you know, it's it's pretty. And it's all like uh, it's just a few people doing it. I mean, it's, I mean, obviously a community, but when you when you look at the cream of the crop, is it? I mean, what kind of quality are you seeing? I mean, there, there's a lot of really great uh, narrators out there, like Nature's Temper. Um, his voice is just amazing. And then there's. Uh, Gosh, I, I'm horrible with their names. Nature's Temper always stuck in my mind because it's such a cool name. Um, there's probably about 
10 or 15 guys and, and you know, gals uh, that I have saved on my computer where I just love their stuff. But I mean, if I had to guess how many are out there, I'd say probably close to a hundred, but I'm, I'm just ballparking. I've never really gone through and looked. So, it, but there's a lot of people out there doing it. But as That's outside of what's that, your, um, what's your intentions going forward? Are you going to stick with YouTube and the website? Or are you going into podcasts eventually? I mean, I know you're small 10 minutes at a time, basically. Right. I've listened to mine and I've listened to Jess and I definitely plan on investing more time into yours. Um, because obviously, you know, I love indie authors. I'm an indie author myself and, you know, I love talking to other artists and you're, you know, you've got a surplus of them out there. I'd love to hear their stories. Um, well, thanks, but they man. seem to be about I actually listen to your podcast more than anyone else. <laughs> oh, really? Um, yeah. So going forward, uh, I, I think I'm going to stick with YouTube for sure. Unless, you know, YouTube crashes and burns, which everybody's saying is going to happen, but I don't honestly believe myself. But I, I do want to get into well, we're going back audio to that format. In a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna put a, we're gonna put a bookmark on that. We'll handle that comment go. in a minute. Um, but, but anyway, um, I, yeah, I do want to go into audio as well. You know, get it up as you know either a pod yeah podcast. podcast format or something like that. But I just haven't really had the time to invest in that and figure it out. I'm kind of taking one challenge at a time as they come. It only so. seems challenging, honestly. It's easier than you would think. Once oh, you podcasting? figure, yeah. Once you figure out how to make that feed, it's so. Oh my god, beating my head against that took me out of almost every single project that I was doing. <laughs> once I figured it out, I'm like back into doing everything I was doing finally, and now I have two, and I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, that that's kind of the way I'm finding with most of it's like YouTube. I I struggled at first with YouTube, but now it's just you know upload, find the tags, you know, publish. So it's, yeah, there's definitely a learning curve to a lot of this stuff. And once you're over that hump, I think you're good. And it's so funny. If you look at the people who are actually making millions and millions of views happen, they have like, it doesn't seem like they do anything. I use Grace Helbig as my big example. It's like she sits in front of a computer, all uh, her, her camera and just says random ridiculous things. And she has millions of views. It seems <laughs> like so easy. And then you try to do something like that and it's not easy. It's incredibly difficult. Yeah. To seem that you charming that and that, what's that? You got to get that break too. Yeah. So, no, it's incredibly difficult to do this type of stuff. And what you're doing is, you know, I wish, again, like you said, I wish more people were doing it because it would actually improve what you're trying to do if you measure yourself against somebody else. Um, in terms okay. of writing, if, uh, you know, there weren't, you know, if there was not Don Quixote, there wouldn't be the next writer and the next writer after that. There wouldn't be something to measure yourself against. Yeah, and not only that, but I mean, if I'm trying to drum up all the excitement for something like this myself, I can only reach so many people. And I think that's why the, the creepypasta thing, you, you could actually watch it explode from when I was looking kind of back in the timelines and stuff like that. It's like at first it started with just a couple of guys and then all of a sudden – three years later, you know, there's hundreds of them and people are just pouring in and all these channels are getting, you know, hundreds of thousands of views and stuff like that. It, it kind of has an exponential effect the more people you can bring in on it. So I, I'd love to drum up the, I, the uh, interest in all these indie authors. Yeah. It would be awesome. I, I discovered you on Reddit. Are you using Reddit at all or are you staying away from oh. it? I know it can be a kind of a double. Oh, you are on Reddit. Okay, good. I what love has Reddit. Been, it's so cool. Oh, <laughs> All right, what's been your experience with uh, uploading your stuff there, or how has that happened? Cause um, I know... So I'm very – go ahead. No, I was, I was going to add to my question, but I want to hear your answer. <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, I'm very particular about um, where I post what. So like there's a couple yeah. Reddit boards that are all about you know uh, free audio books, and so okay. every time I have one, I'll, I'll post up on there. Uh, a couple of different places, like I want to say uh, Bachelor's Fantasy or something like that. Uh, they have like a, I think they either have the free, uh, Friday freebie or the uh, um, self-promo Saturday, one of those two. That's the um, That's the regular fantasy subreddit? Yeah, something like that. I, I have them all saved. I just don't, I'm not in front of my computer right now. <laughs> um, I don't know why. I'm really intimidated by the, the fantasy subreddit. I don't go there at all. Yeah, it's pretty big, but I mean, they post a lot of really cool stuff. So, I mean, but that yeah, would be I, my per my people, right? I would love to have like a right. I would go there to talk, but I stay away from it like one hundred percent. I don't touch it. That actually really surprises me. <laughs> I don't yeah, go there. Your at all. story would have fit right in. 
I don't talk to them. I don't post anything there. But, I just stay away. Some places just really intimidated me. I used to go to um, prompts, story prompts all the time too and post stuff and I just, it would just disappear. You know, I'd spend all day right. laboring over something. I'd write a story. I'd like, oh, this is the best thing ever. And I'd slap it on there and it would be like the second story or something. It would disappear. I'd be like, oh, okay, whatever. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> it would happen like 20 <laughs> yeah. times in a row. I'm like, oh man, what is happening here? The story yeah, above mine like like... can be daunting. I, I tend that? to avoid the, uh, I I tend to avoid some bigger ones too, like the uh, the writing subreddit. I just tend to lurk there for the most part. I'll occasionally post on you know one or two, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is I a bit big. I, I can understand that. I like the challenge ones. I like the ones that there are writing yeah. elements to it, where I can write something and people are reading it, where it seems like people are reading it. I don't like the ones where people are asking questions, the constantly the same questions, like how do I write this or how do I blah, blah, blah. I'm like, mm, it's not really what I want. <laughs> I wish there was yeah, more. Yeah, I don't mind those so much because I like to, to actually, you know, give uh, suggestions and help. But I think my favorite one to just kind of hang out on is the uh, the, the writing prompts. Yeah, that's there's some crazy stuff that comes across there. <laughs> the, I love that one for a really long time. And I just started getting really irritated with the kind of stuff that was coming across. <laughs> it seemed like the same thing over and over and over again. So much traffic, yeah. and I just wasn't getting the the traction I wanted. It seemed like it started hurting my yep. ego. I'm like, huh, oh, this is not going anywhere. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, Reddit and Twitter know. are my big one. Twitter, yeah. So, yeah. That's so, addictive. It's, it's how is dangerous. it? How is it happening for you on Reddit? Is it is it blowing up? Or is it just kind of middling, or is it? Um, so I, I've had some traction with Reddit. Um, like I said, I try not to be obnoxious with any, you know, it's dangerous uh, on Reddit with that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, but uh, I have gotten some traction. In fact, my IO9 interview came from Reddit. So they they saw. I think they might have seen the same one you did. No, no, it was a different one. But they they saw that happened after Reddit, on Reddit. A few months after. Yeah, that's, that's right. Because like that. we were supposed to have our first interview like a month before that happened. <laughs> yeah. And I flaked on you. I'm sorry about that. But oh, yeah. did you? So, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I couldn't uh, get a date because um, I was so busy during that time because I was still learning everything. So, I mean, I was, I, there was a week there where I spent almost 60 hours working on it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yep. And I'm working 44 hours a week at a regular job. So it was like, what's sleep? <laughs> you know? What's sleep? Yeah. It's amazing. You don't know it, it about that. <laughs> no, I have twins. Actually, I get tons yeah. of sleep. Honestly, I'm very well yeah. sleeped. I don't sleep at <laughs> night necessarily, but I I take a nap during the day. Naps are like my best friend. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's uh, it's unfortunate on that. It takes so much effort to get up off the ground. I mean, gravity is a pain in the ass. And that's what mm -hmm. keeps everybody down, honestly. It's just deciding how to take that first step. I mean, if you look yeah. at children and how hard it is to roll over, uh, you're on your back, you know, kicking your legs up in the air. It's so hard to roll over. And it's so hard to pull yourself up into your hands and knees. It's so hard to make your hands and knees work. Why even bother? You know what I mean? It's like this project that you have in your mind that you want to do something with you don't actually know how to make what's in your mind function as a real thing. And once you start making it function as a real thing, the thing that's in your mind isn't going to be what's functioning. Right. Because as we both know, the thing that's functioning is not what's in our mind. <laughs> yeah. just, our imagination is much more powerful than reality. Reality sucks in comparison <laughs> to what we're able to conjure, conjure in our minds. Our minds are not hindered by, you know, the, the physics of the real world, unfortunately. Unless you believe in the secret. <laughs> Do you believe in the secret? Is that what well, your that? is that what your power is? The, you believe in the secret? <laughs> I, I I'm pretty skeptical about that. I do yeah. believe belief plays some factor, but I don't think. I think positive thinking does that. definitely play a little bit yeah. of into everything. I mean, you can't think you're a piece of crap and then go out into the world and expect to be successful. You have to have yeah. some kind of ego, right? I mean, you have to have some 
what would you call it? You have to have some kind of, come on, Chris, what word am I looking for? I, I, I know what you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. We're going to be up too early tomorrow. No, I'm looking for, you have to have some kind of, you know, I'll just stick with ego because that's, you know, I, there was other, yeah, other words that so I was looking important. for, but, huh? <laughs> Self-esteem. Some self -importance. Yeah, self-esteem. Self you have to have self-esteem. You have to have a self of, of, of self. I mean, you have to sit in front of your computer knowing that you're going to eventually find the right series of words to tell the story that you want to tell or, you know, yep. the thing that you want to push out of your mouth is going to sound good enough to enthrall people to listen, pay attention, you know, be yep. motivated enough to punch that up, you know, the, the OK button. If you don't believe comment. you can, you never will. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's hard, especially, I mean, as I know you're aware, it's like you want those comments and those upvotes. Maybe <laughs> yeah. not upvotes, what's it called? The likes or up, whatever. The likes, yeah. I mean, it's so Thumbs sick. Up. Our society with these likes and these, un, you know, you want them so bad because they mean that you've done a good job. Did you ever see that Black Mirror episode about the the likes? Yes, that was good. Oh, this last season was decent. I really liked it a lot. I think it got some negative press or whatnot, but I I really enjoyed a lot of the episodes. See that right there is you know the type of short fiction that I'm talking about where it's it's just that's why I love short fiction. It's so awesome. But <laughs> yeah, I don't you don't read a lot of that stuff. I really want to get into journals because of that type of fiction. I'm yeah. trying to pay attention more to that type of writing on Twitter. When I see journals, I try to follow them. So when they publish, I, I try to snatch them up. And I haven't bought any because I haven't seen any come through yet. That's in, the unfortunate thing about discovering stuff like that is <laughs> Twitter is a 24-hour beast that never stops. Yep. You miss things like that all the time. Yeah, half and the I time I got to go looking for the people that I try to follow. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know who I'm following yet. You know what I mean? And if I interact with them over and over again, then Twitter tries to show me them. And if I stop interacting with them, they get pushed farther down the list. I yeah. love John Scalzi. John Scalzi right now is my god on Twitter because he pushes authors. Um, he pushes science fiction authors all the time, and I'll discover new people. And that's pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, I like him I a think lot. the one that keeps disappearing for me is actually Jess Creedon. It's like <laughs> I, I keep trying to get it to where Twitter will show me her stuff because she's so cool, but it keeps disappearing. Yeah, uh, it this this process has been so fantastic in terms of meeting new people. I hope she's happy with her podcast. We had some tech. She had a. I don't think she had earbuds or um, a microphone, so she was just using her phone in her hand. Um, so she oh, has some audio okay. issues on her side. Um, yeah, so she was that bit, interview. She was a little bit louder, and I hope she wasn't. Uh, turned off by that i'd like to get her back on the to it, it was okay she was incredibly smart she's yeah. very intelligent she's a very smart lady um but yep and i loved her story it's still one of my favorites so oh good yeah i listened to it before <laughs> i had her on um very interesting the multiverse is a nice playground to to roll some dice in yep um, I need to send you the Viking piece. It's over, it's five thousand words though. I don't know if that's too long that's for you. Oh, is it okay? Um, for for somebody I haven't worked with yet, you know, I, I'd have to <laughs> really take a look at it. But you know, I I loved your stuff your, the first time, so don't even worry about it. Just send it on over. You got the green light. <laughs> that's on my list of things to do. Every time I sit at my computer, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna work on this story. Oh no, you're not. You've got eight things to do with the podcast. I don't know if I'm a writer anymore most most days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the reasons I did this is because I was like, well, I could, you know, read a lot more this way. Nope. nope. I haven't read a single book since January. <laughs> I'm uh, on it's Tuesday. No, what is it? Wednesday, I'm working with Emma Hardcastle again. We're doing a second episode of Mirage. And uh, we're doing uh, Mitch. <laughs> this is where I, this is my forte mispronouncing people's names i'm doing mitch a balm a l b o m b okay. how do you say his name do you know who i'm talking about he did the five people that you'll meet in heaven and tuesdays with maury i don't know how to say it uh, i think it's mitch a balm something like that anyway nobody corrects me so it doesn't matter <laughs> i'll just say it however i want uh i'm reading one of his books right now for that it's called uh 
phone calls from heaven or something along those lines. It's been nice mm -hmm. having an excuse just to open up that book and read yeah. like 20% of the way through though. It's embarrassing. It used to take me like no time to read a novel. Now it's like taking me forever. And I have like three other books of his I'd like to read by Wednesday. That's not happening. <laughs> yeah, my book list is almost in the triple digits right now. Triple, yeah, triple digits. Wow. <laughs> we're gonna have to we're gonna have to be old men and not have senility. <laughs> yep. Hopefully, hopefully there is some kind of afterlife because we can spend an eternity just catching up on the books that we wanted to read. <laughs> yeah, just make sure heaven has a library. We're good. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man um so we are pretty successful with tall tale tv how did that come about what were the first steps what did um what did that look like with you for you how did that process so the... start i mean like you woke up one morning and you decided to get that i mean no, we're kind of starting this conversation backwards where you know you're already <laughs> successfully putting that thing into motion but i mean if you were going to tell the story of tall tale tv from the beginning at the end of the podcast how does that story look okay how, how um that story? so i guess we'll do a uh, a really quick overview of the early early beginning of it because <laughs> it's such a long story uh, in 2015, I started having uh, vision problems because I'm a diabetic and I hadn't taken care of myself. I went uh, legally blind for almost a year. And so during that time, I was pretty depressed because I couldn't read it all. And so my wife got me hooked on audiobooks. And when I came out of that, I did come out successfully, you know, against all odds. Uh, I decided that I absolutely loved what these narrators were doing. I'd been listening to all the Terry Pratchett books with uh, Nigel Planer and Stephen Briggs and just the way that they did these voices, it really inspired me. I wanted to kind of help do authors they still, more than, what's Do that? they still perform? Do they you know, still do books? I don't know. I should look into that. <laughs> That's a really good question. Do you have a list of favorites now that are still performing? Ah. Uh, Part of the problem or, is that are you even listening to audiobooks name. anymore? Are you back on hardcore books or hard, hardcore oh, no. books? Are you still are you reading more than you're listening? Uh, audiobooks are the only books I have time for anymore because I can listen uh, to those while I'm at work. So yeah, I listen to audiobooks, and there's a, a couple I just can't remember anybody's name. The the guy who did the Iron Druid series, uh, or Iron Druid Chronicles, uh, I want to say it was like Daniel Lind or something like that. He's an amazing narrator. I loved his stuff. Um, the guy who did all of Joe Abercrombie's stuff, again, I can't remember his name, but I mean, he's got an amazing voice for narration. There, there's, there's a lot of really good guys out there. I just, I'm horrible with names. You know? um, Man, I was just, you know what struck me? I mean, not to interrupt you because your story is amazing, but it really, it just struck me how flooded we are with options for entertainment. I mean, yeah. in this world that we live in, I mean, you can sit there and have a, an endless supply of stuff being flooded into your brain. Yeah, faster than you can absorb it. It's coming out. It's crazy. Impossible to absorb it, right? I mean, there's endless. It's endless. like no other time in history. I mean, yeah, back what, years ago, you could really, there could there was an end. There was yep. like, you could read bad fiction. You could read bad <laughs> books because all the good books were read. You could read all the, you could read all, all the Hemingway and be like, oh, now what? I've read all the good books. Yeah. I'll just read this bad author. <laughs> nope, not anymore. No, all of theirs and more. You could read indie authors until your fingers fall off and then traditional authors. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. And they're all being read by people and nobody's making any money. That's the funny part. I mean, just, who do yeah. you know? Nobody's making any money. Everybody's yep. desperate for a paycheck. Yeah, that's the funny. Sure that's the funny part long. to me. You're making stuff. Yeah. I'm making stuff. We all know like sixty or seventy people that are making stuff. We all got great stories. We're all trying to come up with the greatest idea. And who's floating to the top? Andy Weir, J.K. Rowling. <laughs> I mean, uh, Stephanie, yeah, I mean, Meyer. <laughs> Stephanie Meyer. I don't count her. 
I think she's called her soul. <laughs> but no, seriously, I, I mean, a couple of enemies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I? Are you a big fan of the the the, the vampire stories? No, no. I was saying, uh, no. Stephanie, My wait, is Stephanie Meyer the vampire stories or the Fifty Shades of Grey? No, I don't know who the Fifty Shades of Grey lady is. Stephanie Myers, I thought was the vampire lady, the shiny vampire. Oh. Okay, uh, my wife read those when she said they weren't bad. So <laughs> I, I, I did. I tried to read them. I wanted to like them. I could not get into them. They were the vampires versus the werewolf stories. No, I, I was joking because I haven't met a single person who actually liked Fifty Shades of Grey yet. <laughs> so but yet they were made into like eighty movies, I think, and she, that woman's like a millionaire. Yep, I, I think somebody told me she actually made more money than J.K. Rowling, but I don't know if that was accurate or not. <laughs> Don't quote I, me I, could, that. I could yell upstairs to my wife, who I do not think read those books, but she knows that woman's name. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> she probably wants to yell down the woman's name, too. <laughs> huh. I'm surprised she hasn't. She probably can't hear me. Anyway, I'm not just an I mean, just it just amazes me. I mean, there are so, this world that we live in is so talented, and I wonder why. I mean... I always, I'm just curious. I have wondered about World War II. Did the talented, did the the best soldiers walk away from that war as survivors, or did the lucky? And <laughs> are we are we the grandchildren of the lucky or the best soldiers? I don't. Right. Maybe that's just a dumb way to look at us, but it was just this odd civilization that we live in. This weird place where we're all just begging to make something and we live in such an over created society as it is. We've got these yep. gigantic roads with fast food restaurants on the side of them and just you walk outside and all you do is smell grease and french fries and <laughs> <laughs> we're not pampered. We're not pampered. We're not all gigantic fat things waddling on <laughs> you know, waddling across parking lots, getting into our cars after a ten foot journey breathing hard <laughs> man it's just fine in apocalypse what are you talking about <laughs> we'll be fine the russians aren't just you know <laughs> murdering yeah. fiends oh man it's so it was so funny i i don't know where i think it was stephen colbert i was watching just a tiny little snippet of a you know his pre-show and he was talking to yeah. um some kind of russian and this, do you know how in Russia they make friends? They fight each other. <laughs> That's how they make <laughs> friendships. We fight each other, and then we're friends. It's like, wow. <laughs> Last time I got uh -huh. into a fight, it was with some dude who got released from prison, and he hated me, and he was trying to kill me. He definitely was not wanting to be my friend. That's not how we make <laughs> friends in this country at all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Stephen more. Colbert. Oh, I actually had to watch. stop listening to the news because uh, my blood pressure was getting so high the doctors were getting worried. <laughs> oh, what you're not a you're not a, a Trump supporter? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I thought ever I thought Colorado went Trump. Uh no. <laughs> we did not. Oh, really? I thought I thought oh, well that's good. That's good. Well you just went up <laughs> a whole lot in my book. <laughs> I'm no, we, so we, sick. we tried to get Bernie in. <laughs> Yeah, but, I was devastated. We were Bernie, Bernie supporters as well. I was really hoping that was going to go that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, that was really sick. I'm, this whole situation is sad. I don't know the world that we live in. I, I don't, the expectation does not look good. I'm on Reddit all the time, and the front page <laughs> is just really depressing. It's like every other page, every other article seems to be Trump is looking into ways to uh, – you know, uh, pardon himself. Like, huh? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> I don't dangerous. think that's possible. But Pence can pardon him. <laughs> Jeez. It's like, dude, I don't know what the world's going to be like four years from now. I have children, too, you know? Yep. I was thinking there was an article today saying uh, our, our uh, baby boomers were selfish. I'm thinking, well, you know, the baby boomers are selfish. The MTV generation was selfish. Generation X was selfish. Y is selfish. The millennials are selfish. <laughs> Who isn't selfish? We're all right. a bunch of selfish assholes. We have McDonald's <sighs> down the street. I mean, we have to be. <laughs> right? I need my Big Mac. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. 
I mean, what do you think? Getting away from our, our personal projects, how are we going to save the world? Let's save the world right now on this podcast. Get everybody interested in books. That way they're too busy to fight. Yeah, but then we kill the trees. Ebooks. But then we have to drill we'll, the golf. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get Bernie elected. He'll fix everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. He'll make his vice president Bertie. Bertie Sanders will be his vice president. It'd be fantastic. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. That was the best moment of the of the primaries. When that bird landed on that podium, I was like, oh, that's a sign. That is a freaking right. sign. <laughs> we were so in love. It was amazing. I can't believe you lost, though. I was like, how are you voting for this woman? She's so horrible. She's so horrible. <laughs> It's oh, like nothing. Geez. There's nothing redeemable about her as a person. You can tell she's fake. How? Why are you people in love with her? I just didn't get it. Yeah, it's it, it's a bit of a clown show anymore. But I don't know who one. um who's gonna win in three years. Who's gonna be the next <laughs> one? I, I'm not even gonna go there. I haven't been watching it since uh, March, so I don't even know who's talking anymore. Is this Trump? I was, watching I was a about little to bit lose of, uh... my eyesight again because of it. So. <laughs> oh, really? It was that stressful for yep. you? Yep, the, the stress was actually starting to make me relapse. Do you do uh, yoga? I don't, uh, but I, I do like deep breathing exercises and stuff like that, which Meditation. I've got to do for the voice acting anyways. So it's kind of yeah. like two birds with one yeah, stone. There's no reason to stress yourself, stress yourself out that much about it. It's yeah. really not that big of a deal. I mean, we got a finite amount of time on this planet anyway. And you find exactly. the stuff that you enjoy and do it. And, you know, I mean, I, I guess my we're not Venezuela. My place my way. We, we're not Venezuela. We have a beautiful country here. Yeah. We really do. Because yep. we can talk to each other over thousands of miles and we can complain about the dumbasses in Washington and we can call them dumbasses and nobody's going to kick in our front doors and arrest us and kill us or our families. We have a wonderful place. And we can go to McDonald's after we're done here. I'm not going yep. to, though. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe an iced coffee. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you do the iced coffees. They do make yeah, some they, good coffee. They're the only one I've found that has a sugar-free iced coffee. So, yeah. Oh, really? Gotta, but it's pretty good. Oh, it's too late for coffee. I know. <laughs> My wife went to go meet her cousin today at the mall, and I took like a four-hour nap. <sighs> it was nice. That's either good or bad. It depends on the day. Oh, man, I'm always taking naps. I drop them off at daycare and uh, at the bus early in the morning. I'm, you know, awake at 2. I write for like three hours. I come home after the gym, and I just crash Yeah. for a couple hours, and then I wake up and do my podcast business. It's like, I swear to God, writing is like taking a, a backseat 100%. But that's the way work out too. I I used to, um, but uh, I had to stop around the time that everything happened with my eye because I wasn't allowed to lift anything, mm. because I had that burst blood vessel in my eye, and if I lifted anything more than like ten pounds, you could actually force more blood in there and cause oh, wow. me to you know have bigger problems. So I went you know six months without doing any working out, and so now I do mostly just uh, cardio kind of stuff where I walk, I bike, you know, I swim, stuff like that. So I don't lift weights anymore, but used to. Does that impact your your day to day still? I mean, can you do in your normal job stuff? Yeah, I'm I'm fully uh, uh, better at this point. I can lift whatever I need to for work. You know, we've got sixty pound boxes and stuff we've got to toss around. But you know, for the most part, I, I'm back to normal. I just I, I kind of got lazy about the lifting weights and didn't want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I would say lifting weights is the worst thing I do on a database. I try to do it as <laughs> little as possible. I hate it so much. I cannot yeah. stand it. I cannot stand it. I love swimming. Swimming is my new passion. Yeah. <sighs> Just love jumping in That's the water, awesome. putting earbuds in, listening to a podcast for a little while. Just like zoning out and running. Everything else just is horrible. I hate lifting. <laughs> I have like an old man shoulder where I can't lift it. Yep. Like the iron the irony is if I lift, I'll be able to lift it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did think of something though that I wanted to ask you, because okay. maybe in the same, you know, vein as uh the online situation, have you 
had any thoughts on marketing? I, mean, I know you're on Reddit. I know you're on Twitter. What do you think of marketing in general? Getting out there, getting your name out there, getting your story out there, that type of situation. So are you talking about me personally? Yeah, I mean, I'm struggling with it. I, gotcha. I just don't know what I'm doing with getting that attention. I mean, we talked about how everybody right. has something. Everybody's trying to sell something. Everybody is trying to get their product out there, their story out there, their novel out there. I mean, how do you well, do it? What are your thoughts on it? You get on podcasts. <laughs> 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 Um, so you just got to find the podcast for podcasters. Just kidding. Um, I mean, podcasts. No, are I mean that's a good idea. People do that stuff, right? I mean, they they try to create content that potentially will make waves. That'll potentially get their name out there. But you know, even the podcasters are looking for you know ears and eyes and whatever. Absolutely. And uh, the one that I, I've seen um, some people do in podcasts, which I guess has had pretty good results for you know individuals like you, is they will see who's willing to do. Um, uh collaborations you know so you find another podcaster and you ask if you can collaborate with them and you guys both interview somebody i've seen that happen quite a few times actually so uh i mean that also happens in kind of the uh the creepypasta community people will collaborate and then you know people from that guy's uh um group of followers will follow you know the other person's group of follow, you know you know what i'm saying <laughs> sorry i'm getting tired <laughs> no, no it's okay i feel you so yeah, um, podcasting, collaboration, uh, those are both things that I'm planning on doing. Uh, I have actually looked into some paid advertisements. Um, but have you so like far, Facebook, the... Twitter, Reddit type situation? Yeah, I even paid a, like 40 bucks or something like that to, to toss up an ad on a flash fiction um, journal. Uh, but I didn't get any traction from that at all. So I've done Reddit once for something, and I didn't see anything come from that either. I... I mean, as a reader of Reddit, I did not, I, I never pay attention to that stuff. I see an ad, I just, you know, quickly scroll past it. Right. Even on YouTube, if I see an ad, I either wait for it to go away or I, you know, click past it as fast as humanly possible. Ads are Yeah, as far as right? paid advertisements, I think I'm going to wait to actually invest more money into that until I've got, you know, more than 30 episodes, which I think is what I'm coming up on now. Do you think that paid advertisements are actually potentially uh, an investment later on Absolutely. down the road too? You, I mean, as somebody who would be a victim to <laughs> a victim to paid advertisements, you would you be okay with that? Oh, you mean on the actual? Um, wait, how, how do you mean? Well, I mean, in terms of me being, I don't know subjected to it i never look at them i mean i look away i don't ever buy what they're suggesting i buy generally you know what i mean oh, is, I mean, is like, it worthwhile paying yeah, is it worthwhile to begin with i mean is it even beneficial as to to spend a single penny on advertising i mean is, right is there another is there a better solution because i feel like it's kind of intrusive yeah, it, in a way. It's definitely something I'm going to experiment with at some point, because um, I know a lot of authors have actually gotten traction with that. You know, that's where really? they get their their initial boost. Whether or not that will work for me or for the next author down the line, you know, I have no idea until I try. You know, I'm going to get my feet wet a little bit at a time, but I'm definitely not going to rely on that. Um, I mean, word of mouth is the most powerful form of advertisement. Period. Yeah. So I think you know, having a YouTube channel where it's completely free for somebody to come and see. You know, and then it's like, hey, check this out. You know, that's going to be probably the the fastest form of growth for, you know, something like me or even your podcast probably. I'm, I'm guessing. I've never really dived too much into the marketing aspect. But, um, yeah, I, I'm going to look into anything I can and just try everything, you know. I had a conversation with an author who said email lists are the best. Collecting yep, I've email got my email list going. Collecting I put out a, a newsletter every email. week. Do you really? To people yeah, like me? It's, yeah, I mean, if, like if you want to, you can sign up for it. It's just on the, the sidebar of my website on talltaletv.com. But uh, I just, every week I send out, you know, a little email that has uh, both of the week's videos. Hopefully it'll be more than two soon. 
Um, and then, you know, if I've got like, you know, a little uh, something that I found interesting or if there's like right the last one I sent out had a link to some book promotion that was going on, you know, so I just try to include a couple little things in there to make it, you know, more worthwhile than just seeing the videos. Where'd you but get yeah, your uh, uh, emails at? Uh, so I signed up with MailChimp. Uh, I'm doing their free thing right now because the first 2000 names are free. And then uh, I just I've had it up on my website and I actually haven't gotten looking for anybody. You know, I've only got like. I want to say seven followers or something like that, but it's out of the first initial thought, 2000 initial 2000. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause so I've got seven out of 2000 that I can have. And after I hit the 2000 mark, then I have to get the paid version. So oh, I see. I've got a ways to grow I before like, I have to give them any money. <laughs> I they gave you 2000. I was like, wow. I normally got seven. No. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to build it yourself. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I'm I'm gonna start uh, advertising a little bit more at like the end of my videos and let people know that it's there. But yeah, I've, I have heard that the newsletters are the number one thing you can do because if somebody signs up for your newsletter, that means they're at least interested in what you're doing, you know. So yeah, I am do. definitely very interested in what you're doing, and I am embarrassed I did not already sign up for your newsletter. So I'm gonna do that now. But of course, <laughs> oh here it is. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Well, thank um, you. Okay, well, I'm on your, and I did it. Yay. Um, <laughs> what was I going to say to you? Update. Grassroots. <laughs> What's that? Update. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Grassroots, man. It's, it's amazing. I mean, in terms of doing this on your own, starting from scratch, it's, it's definitely impressive. It's not yeah, easy. You just got to love it. You have to love what you're doing because, I mean, there's been a couple moments where I'm like, ah, I can't do this today. But, you know, I just, I think about it. It's like, no, I, I got to do this because it's it's what I love. And I know I'm going to hate myself if I don't. But I, after I get going, it's like I'm glad I didn't stop because I am enjoying this so dang much, even though it takes up my entire day. You know, it's awesome. I love the the interaction with the guy I did not know a month ago. You know what I mean? The, <laughs> exactly. the dude that – it just amazes me that, oh, this is fun. I didn't know this guy, and now you know I consider him a friend, and it's yeah. neat. And next time you know I see his name or whatever or her name, I had an hour conversation with them, and now I've got 36 people that I've never – you know I did not know before I started this process. Absolutely. Uh, Hopefully, you know, this continues. I, mean, I don't see any reason why it won't. And, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm loving it. I mean, hanging out with you is just awesome. I, <laughs> I've never actually done podcasts before, and this is just so cool. It's laid back, you know? But, yeah, that's that's Joe Rogan. Yeah, you, I, you actually remind me of Joe Rogan. I thought that the first time I listened to your stuff, it's like this guy kind of reminds me of Joe Rogan. <laughs> Do you listen so to his podcast? His, yeah, I love his podcast. I haven't listened yeah, to it yeah. lately. You're, you're like a Joe Rogan with uh, less profanity and less drugs. But <laughs> Well, I'm going to have to change that. No, I'm in I'm in New York. I can't get drugs here. Uh, yeah, I'm in Colorado. <laughs> yeah, I know. Jealous, man. You probably don't take advantage of that, though, I imagine. No, I don't. I don't touch any of that stuff, that or alcohol. But It sounds like your job is pretty hardcore about it. No, it's personal choice. It's oh, really? Because, oh, okay. uh, with all my health problems and stuff like that. And I've, I've had a lot of um, addicts in my family, like a lot. Oh, really? So that's something that, you know, my, both my parents were not, thank God. Um, and so I just kind of avoided that, you know, seeing everybody in my family that was getting destroyed by alcohol and drugs and stuff like that. It was just kind of heartbreaking. You know, I've got an uncle who they keep telling us he's got a week left to live and somehow he's been holding on for the last two years. Wow. But you know, it's, it's crazy. It's horrible. That's alcohol. Yep. And he just refuses to stop. I mean, I think right now he's actually uh, off uh, on the wagon or off the wagon, which, whichever the, the good term is. <laughs> it's on. Off is bad. Yeah, I think he's on the wagon. But he, he's been having a lot of trouble with that. He actually gave up a while back and just decided it was just going to take him. But he turned around. So that's that's good. But yeah, just uh, avoid that stuff because of it. Uh, I'm very fortunate. I'm very happy fortunate i'm very happy that i did not have an issue with alcohol that seems like a very painful way to live your life not being able to choose not to do something you know what yep. i mean just being drunk like that and having bad decisions being made on your behalf because of 
being inebriated. It just seems like a horrible, horrible way to live your life. Yeah. But I don't know. The weed situation sounds like a glorious way to have um, around you, though. So I'm jealous <laughs> of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mind that anybody uses it. So go for it. Keep it mellow. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that the attitude in this country kind of turns itself around a little bit. It's, uh, I don't know. As a parent, I definitely don't want my children to uh, have criminal records. And uh, I don't know how I feel about them smoking. I definitely don't want them to drink, though. I think that's poison. A beer every once in a while. Papist ale. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got that on my list, uh, on my bucket list. Your uh, bucket list. Only when you're like 90, though. <laughs> 97 years old, you're allowed to drink a Papist ale in Belgium. In and, Belgium, uh, okay. In Belgium, only in Belgium. 97 years old, you know, then you're allowed to do it. But until then, no. <laughs> um, we Sounds think. Good. What have we not talked about that we need to, as I throw things around on my desk and ruin this podcast completely? Um, I mean, we got distracted on your question earlier. Did we yeah, I know. That? I was talking about your, your how you started the the podcast, and you went into how uh, you started it because you were not able to read, and you started listening to the audiobooks, and you got your eyes back. You know what's really ironic about that? You got your eyes back, and you started giving back to – people who can't read in a way yeah that was actually a really big part of it was you know it, it it hit me so hard when i couldn't read that just listening to these audiobooks you know i i knew i wanted to do something with that and you know, i didn't really think too much about it i you know it's just it, it it hit me you know so i decided to to do audiobooks and uh like i said i looked into acx and made the decision it's i don't want to do novels i want to do short stories so I, I talked to a couple authors that I know because I've you know kind of got a group that I do critiquing for and stuff like that. And we all just kind of kicked around some ideas and I came up with Tall Tale TV. And the premise is basically I just make promo videos for authors that are trying to get their stuff seen. You know, so it was a way for me to, you know, read out loud, give people stories that they can just listen to while they're you know, at work or if they can't see or whatever the case may be. And it helps, you know, individuals who are trying to get noticed because there's a lot of authors out there who have amazing work and they've got like, you know, two reviews on Amazon. And it's just heartbreaking to see that. So my uh, goal with this project is actually to become kind of a, um, uh, what would the term be, a, uh, an influencer, I guess, somebody that can actually help kickstart careers and stuff like that. I would just get the biggest kick if I could give somebody their break, you know. But uh, you're giving yourself a break, though, in a way. I mean, that's 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 the most interesting thing to me is that you might be helping authors along, but at the same time, you're kind of establishing yourself in a career. Yeah, if I make money at this eventually, great. You know, I'm not right now, but um, I, I'm even if I never make a dime on this thing, it is not something that I will ever regret doing. Right. I've met and a lot of cool your people. Your wife does the art on your on your on the on the channel, right? Or is that you? Um, I do most of the art. Um, wow. She does the art on her episodes. So like the uh, of Monsters and Mushrooms, she does the artwork on that. Uh, but all the other artwork I actually do myself. I actually got a uh, associates in arts in college off of a scholarship. Uh, so I went and you know learned all the the fine techniques of drawing with charcoal and stuff like that that I'm never going to use again. And then went back to the stuff <laughs> that I learned in high school about you know using Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. I think we talked about Photoshop last time. I'm in love with it. I love it so much. Yep. Photoshop it's is one of my favorite things fun. ever. I can't I actually it's pretty can't zen for me. What is it? It's pretty zen for me. I can zone out to it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm actually looking forward to getting off this podcast so I can make our graph my graphic for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm awesome. checking out your wife's uh, your art her art right now. So what what does she do with it? What uh, how does she make her art? Is it Photoshop um, as well, or is she freehand? No, she's freehand. Uh, she tends to her process is usually for the the stuff like what you're seeing. She'll do it in pencil, and then she'll you know ink it, uh, erase all the pencil, and then she goes over it with markers. So that's all marker art that you're seeing. So this right is there. all freehand. Yeah. Chapter three. Yeah. We actually um uh we're uh kind of um art buddies when we were kids uh, she was in vegas i was in colorado when we would send artwork back and forth and that's how we knew each other for the longest time 
if I remember correctly, when we we talked the first time, I insulted the living crap out of Vegas, and I did not mean to. <laughs> oh no, it's not fun. She didn't like it either. She hated it there. <laughs> oh really? Okay. Well, yeah. you know, Vegas is Vegas. It it has its highlights, and then it doesn't have a lot of highlights. Yeah. It's got a lot of porn stores, but beyond that, does it? I did not ever notice the porn stores, but you know, oh. I did notice that the the card flippers outside on the strip would handle a lot of porn. Yeah, it was the biggest shock to me when I went down there because I come from this little rural town in Colorado, you know, Longmont, uh -huh. and we have one porn store that they have been trying to get rid of since you know I was seven when we moved here. And then we go out there, and it's like every other street corner, there's these giant signs for adult bookstores. And it was just a, such a culture shock. You know, it's, I didn't care or anything like that. It's just I didn't realize that an industry would actually be, you know, that prevalent in an area. You'd think one or two per, you know, square mile would be more than <laughs> enough. But apparently the not. There's a lot of uh, strip clubs up there, too. And I've never noticed that either. I've been like twice or three times. I can't remember. <laughs> so Long Longmont is just north of Denver. God, yeah, man, it must be so there. beautiful there. I've been to Denver once. That was a very nice experience. Oh, Boulder's just south of you too. Yeah, Boulder's closer. Uh, Boulder's like twenty minutes away down the what we call the diagonal. But um, yeah, we're we're about half an hour away from the mountains, so we are in farmland. So it's not immediately beautiful right around us, but, you know, just a short drive and, you know, we're in really nice areas. Well, so, I just learned a whole bunch about geography just looking at Longmont. I did not realize that Boulder was so close to Denver. I always thought Boulder was like down there, Colorado Spring, uh, Springs, but hmm. <laughs> I can't stand Boulder. You don't like Boulder? Boulder is the wor wor worst place in the world to drive. And I'm, oh, I, I'm including places like Denver and New York and stuff like that. People there... They're insane, and I don't know what it is, but people call them boulderites because they just drive like maniacs. So every uh, time we go there, we're you know it's like every other block we're almost in an accident. It's crazy. But well, other than that, it's know. a beautiful place. <laughs> Up here, we just have traffic and people that like yeah. to tailgate you and flip you off, and when you get really mad at them, it turns out they're ninety years old. <laughs> and old ladies who can't see over their steering wheel and you're wondering why they have no side paneling on their car and their mirrors are hanging off <laughs> like oh lady why are you driving i can't get mad at you because you'll probably end up ramming me with your car <laughs> the boulders just got soccer moms and giant suvs that are yelling at their kids in the back seat while texting doing yeah, 70 that, miles an hour in a 45 zone <laughs> that you just that's when you just drive them off the road and that's their fault officer <laughs> they were texting look they were in the middle of it you've done a whole lot for the gene pool right then and there <laughs> <laughs> i like it I like it too. We have a plan for the, that's our plan for the future, man. I knew we would solve humanity's problem. Soccer moms. We got it. We've done it. <laughs> no more Trump in the white house. Yep. Just send them all there. <laughs> um, so I don't even think I let you finish your story about your podcast, but oh, ultimately geez. what you've done is create an altruistic, uh, construction that is helping people and you're helping yourself at the same time, which kind of defeats the purpose of altruism, but I'm willing to overlook it because it really is <laughs> a really, really neat site, man. It's, it's just, I really like what you've done. I liked it when I heard about it on Reddit. Um, I really, really enjoy what you did with my story. I mean, I thought it was a good story when I wrote it, obviously. Right. <laughs> it you was. Know, I thought it was good enough to send to you and say, hey, would you mind reading it? And then you read it and I loved my story. I was like, ah, oh, dude, that was a good story, really. And, you know, I claimed to be an egotist, but at the same time, I thought I was going to cringe having you read the thing. I thought it was going to be, <laughs> you know, like, oh, no, you know. I'm embarrassed. Oh, I can't let anybody read this, but I'm actually proud of my fiction that you read on on your on your on your YouTube channel, and that makes me feel really good. And I hope that, that right there people... is actually one of my favorite things because you'd be surprised how many people are exactly like that. You know, as soon as I send it to them, I'm sweating, you know, bullets because it's like I hope they like this, and then they hit me back and it's like I can't believe you did that to the story. It's amazing. It's the huh. best feeling in the world. So 
it was I'm, it was the best like feeling in the world honestly i mean i gotta tell you you know thank you for doing that and it was magnificent yeah. to have me read my story and i hope that other people share that with you yeah. and i hope that you get some some I don't know what you'll get out of it. I hope you get some good stuff out of it. And I hope you continue being able to do what you're doing with it and whatever's going to come to you for what you're, you know, I hope it's something that you can enjoy. I hope yeah, you're able to do it right now for sure. But whatever it is, man, you know, a year, do it longer than, than that, because it's probably not going well, to, I've already told myself out. that I am going to do it through 2020. Oh, okay, and at good. That point, I'll reassess and see if I want to change anything. Cool. But my plan is to do it through 2020, and I, I can't see myself not wanting to do it past then. But I, I promised myself to do it at least that far so that I would give it a, a real shot. Perfect. So. Perfect, and I think that that's fair. And uh, we'll have you on the podcast again. Um, let's do this. I'm kind of asking some ending questions here. Uh, what are you reading sure. right now? What am I reading right now? Um. Gosh, uh, besides a book on how to do accents. <laughs> well, what's the book on how to do accents? Uh, I, I can't remember the name of it. It's like Freeing the Human Voice or something like that. Um, as far as novels, um, I was in the middle of the Iron Druid Chronicles. We'll do that. It's, it's okay. one of the audio books that I've been listening to. So that, that's more fiction. We'll stick to fiction. But the, the Iron Druid Chronicles, they are amazing. So if you haven't checked those out, they're w well worth a read. Where uh, can people find you? Uh, TallTaleTV.com is my website. You can also find me on YouTube at youtube.com slash C slash TallTaleTV. What is one piece of advice that you want people to be left with? Follow your dreams. Um, I just did this because it felt right. And it, it's amazing. You know, even if I never succeed at it, it was worth it. So if you find something that you want to do, just do it. I think that's pretty cool. And so are you, man. And I really appreciate you hanging out with me tonight and doing this take too. And I, I wish I had listened to you the first time you told me I sounded like a robot, but <laughs> hey, I think we did better this time. I think this worked out better yeah. than the podcast. Yep, we are warmed up this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. We'll awesome. talk again. All right, can't wait. All right, man, bye-bye. And that was Chris Heron. I have some interesting guests coming up. BrianAguilla.com is my website. That's a landing page for basically all of my fiction, all of my podcasts. I'm starting something new with Emma Hardcastle, also doing some solo stuff with it as well. I'm gonna do an episode on Kurt Vonnegut, calling this one uh, Mirage, speculating on speculative fiction. Follow me on Twitter for news on this and fiction and my origins. Uh, B-R-Y-A-I-E-L-L-O for news. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate you listening. Makes me feel good. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.